Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Effects Maniac. This is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri and in today's tutorial, I'll show you guys how to create this really cool effect, this sort of water splash effect uh, using Phoenix FD and 3D Studio Max. So uh, I just posted it on my YouTube channel preview and now I'll show you guys how to do it. But before getting into this tutorial, if you want to support my channel and myself, and also get some free bonuses and project files you can check out my patreon page which i created recently so you can just go ahead and support me there if you want to so it'll help me create more of these awesome video tutorials for you guys all right so let's get into 3 studio max here is my scene so i have a light bulb model which i didn't model it myself uh, i actually went online so there's this like free 3d Com and you go there and you have some pretty awesome free models I think this is the one that I've used so you can go ahead and check it out there and uh, yeah so I'll just go back here and I created like a backdrop a seamless backdrop which is very simple to do I'll just show you guys real quick you just draw a plane and you just go ahead right click on the segments right click convert it to editable poly and just select the edge and shift drag it within the Y and Z axis and just shift drag it upwards again. And now you can just go ahead and add a turbo smooth modifier and add some levels to it. And there you go, you have your seamless backdrop. That's it. So I placed my light bulb there and I basically added like a shell modifier to give it some shell and a turbo smooth modifier to make it smooth and that's it that's for the setup of the object and I have a torus knot as an emitter so what I did was I created my Phoenix FD liquid from here Phoenix Phoenix FD liquid sim I created my grid and I also went ahead and created a liquid source so just here and here is my liquid source and I'm using a torus knot so I've animated the outgoing velocity from 50 within like what 10 frames it should go down to zero because as you see here it just stops you know because we want one big splash for 10 frames and the rest will just you know take care of itself so I've created that and that's basically it for the emitter part and let's go into the grid settings I'll show you guys what I did so for the final resolution I used like 21 million total cells to get this result of course you can go up but I think this is like sufficient enough and it looks pretty good with the foam and all and speaking of foam if I go back here go into dynamics so I increase the steps per frame to four, which will make, uh, you know, which will make, you know, if you have a very fast moving liquid, it will make the interactions between the liquid and the object much more better. So the more steps, the more better, but the more time it's going to take. And time scale. Uh, so the, the initial sim was very fast because the time scale was set to one. So I had to slow it down. So I just went there you can see that it's it has a pretty reasonable speed so that's why I uh, decreased it to like 0.2 so 0.2 was enough if you want to go even slower you can go 0.1 or 0.05 but I think 0.2 in this case was a very good number for me and pretty much everything else is default and I went into the foam tab enabled it and when you create that when you enable that you create like a foam shader it automatically creates it and uh, yeah, so you add the Phoenix FD grid here and you can increase the number of uh, the count of foam. So I increase it by two and the rest of the settings are by default. And you just hit simulate. I'm, I mean, it's not like you just hit simulate and you'll get this magic result, but you have to play around with it a few times in order to get it. And I had to play around a lot to get this result. So it looks pretty good. And the other thing is, um, speaking of lighting, so I created this like uh, polygonal shape light. So I just created one light 
shift dragged it and made an instance because if you want to bring a change it'll bring it'll update for all the lights and I just like rotated them you know to face the main scene and as for the materials I'm using V-Ray so if I go ahead into my render setup so I have V-Ray set there and I hit M for the materials so I have a water material uh, which is like default so I change the color to black some reflection and refraction so the water material sorry the glass material this is the glass material and as for the water material as well so I have like uh, uh, so the color to black white for the reflection and white for the refraction but then the only thing I've changed is I gave it a very slight fog color and now that will do is uh, it will give it this blue tint and uh, which looks kind of like the ocean water and looks pretty good especially when it gets deep and it looks very good with this like foam so it's just beautiful all right so I just uh, have this material and uh, yeah so if you want to have this project file with all the materials and the object uh, and the scene setup and everything you can go ahead into my patreon so you go there and you can you can have it I have a link here and then you can you can you can go ahead and use it and you know just get the same effect all right so this was like a very quick sort of walk over of the project that I did I hope you guys enjoyed it and finally I came, I created a camera so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And if you have any questions, anything, you can just go ahead and uh, uh, comment them down below into the section, the video section for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to get some high quality music, you can go ahead and check out our audio aura channel. All right. So this was the today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Enjoy working.